The bulls are back on the Lao Street and so are the FII's. The Nifty and the Sensex snapped a two-week losing streak. How is India standing tall in a challenging environment and where are foreign investors placing their bets? Hello and welcome to the Editor's Roundtable yet again. It's me, Sonia, and I have all the editors here with me, Anuj, Nigel and Nimesh. Folks, it was a good week and you know, more importantly, I think not only did we uh, break our losing streak, we had big participation coming from large sectors like the banks. You know, uh, uh, Sonia, even the losing streak uh, was a very minor, min yeah. minuscule losing streak. Uh, and I'll give you a mind-boggling uh, statistic. Uh, do you know this week, uh, the mid-cap index was up for, you know, in terms of consecutive weeks, how many consecutive weeks? About eight or nine? Twelve. Twelve, Twelve consecutive weeks which make, makes it three months. Three months, the mid-cap index has not seen red yes. on a weekly basis. Uh, I mean, you could call it exuberance, you could call it whatever, but uh, uh, you know, when, when the mid-cap index rallies like this, that's when you feel good about the market. You know, there are two kinds of rallies. One is when the rally is quite narrow. And you know, it's just index which makes money and people feel left out. They might still feel left out, but their portfolios don't do well. They say, okay, index is doing well, but portfolio is not doing well. This is a rally in which People's portfolios have been repaired after that mayhem that we saw in May and June. So I think in that sense, for me, that really has been the key point. And of course, a lot of laggards made a comeback this week, like IT. So that's also another talking point. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I mean, uh, we were discussing this, right? Now, if you go into to a room with 20 people, 21 people are bullish, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's how exuberant the market. People, I went to a room last Saturday where there were 450 people. All retail investors, I, I went for a conference, some of the biggest market names were there as keynote, spe keynote speakers. And I could sense the kind of you know, uh, interest which was there for retail, for, from retail investors towards equity markets. Everybody wants to know newer, newer ideas, everybody was talking about you know, where to invest, how to invest, how do, how do we do as, asset allocation. So clearly there is a lot of interest from retail investors, and especially Chennai crowd, yeah. we are so much into equity. The equity cult is so good in, 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 in the south. And you know, uh, some of the largest investors who I met from ch from the south, they, they are not convinced or happy with even 10x and 20x. You know, 20x wow. is like, oh, it's okay. 100x, 200x is what they talk about. You know, that's the kind of equity cult which is there in, in the south, especially with larger investors who want to make a real big killing in the equity markets. And one more feedback for the entire team. Uh, as I said, you know, there were 450 uh, retail investors who participated in that event. Uh, you know, so many people came and uh, spoke to me. And everybody was was so much of praise for you, Anuj, Nigel, <laughs> the entire CNBC team. They are like, oh, you guys do a fabulous job. I'm I'm big fan of Sonia. I want to meet her <laughs> once. I, I, I track Anuj's big morning call every day. I said, yeah, that's what we try to do, right? Just try to help out the retail investors. So, so much of appreciation for, for the kind of work everybody in the team oh, and does. Of course, you know, we, that's, appreciate, that's which, we appreciate our viewers. Oh, in, in exactly. a, we are what nowhere we, without them, that's right? That's what we aim for, right? Just to Absolutely. help the viewers as much as we can. Like, you know, in whichever way, whichever form, analysis, managements, everything. You know, it, that, was, that was such a big high the for big me. The big highlight. So much of love and affection for the entire CNBC team and so much of, you know, people just so, so much eager to meet you or talk to you <laughs> or like follow Anuj's tweets and all. It's amazing. Okay, so let's talk about the markets then. Uh, Anuj, what was the big highlight for you this time around? Was it the exuberance? Was it the euphoria? And what are the numbers you're looking at? Uh, yeah, you know, let's uh, actually throw the numbers at the wall. And uh, the, the, basically the key talking point this week is the kind of FI data that we got and what kind of stocks are FI is buying. Uh, the FIs are back, uh, absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, now, this is the month of August when we have the final number now. This is the NSDL data. So this is the official data counting for each each and every cent, 51,204 crores, which makes it $6.4 billion. Uh, that's a lot of money, right, uh, which is uh, chasing our market. But, you know, I wanted to know what exactly is this money backing. Now, this is what it is, and I'll spend some time here. Uh, what are FIs buying? Now, 8,600 crores of uh, healthcare that you see is entirely because of that max block deal. Otherwise, healthcare has not been a preferred sector. What's been the number one preferred sector? It's financials. Over 6,000 crores of buying is what you have seen in financials from FIs. And it's no surprise that the bank Nifty has been doing what it is doing, really outperforming. Capital goods, 2,200 crores. Consumer, now consumer, 2,100 crores. I mean, if you compare consumer to financials, actually consumer is even bigger because consumer uh, index is much smaller than the financials index. So this 2,100 crores also explains the outsized gains that you've seen in the consumer basket. And why this why this these three pockets are important is for all of those who have who remember that early 2003 to 2005 rally. I remember because I started my career at that point. This is exactly the kind of stocks doing well. Financials were leading it. 
capital goods were surging because the bet was on the economy and consumption was doing well. When consumption is doing well and those financing consumption are doing well, you know the economy is doing well. And I think that is the big bet that the FIs are taking on the economy. It's further corroborated by the fact that, again, autos, 1900 crores, telecom, 1600 crores, FMCG, 1500 crores. What's another common theme uh, amongst all of these? Ex of healthcare, of course. Uh, all of them are domestic facing stocks. Uh, now look at where the FIs actually sold a little bit, not a lot. Uh, uh, media is a small sector, but IT. 600 crores of selling is what you had from FIs in the IT sector. So that's the, the large theme. Uh, now, you know, then I thought that, okay, what kind of stocks is this money really chasing? Let's drill it down. Let's start with financials, ICICI Bank. Now the stock is up 10% in last one month. Look at the average delivery volumes on ICICI Bank. This is a giant cap stock. 73 lakh shares delivery volumes on a daily basis, which is up 20% from its recent averages. Uh, the other go-to stock has been State Bank of India, country's largest bank. That stock is at lifetime high. It's the biggest outperformer. In fact, it's outperformed ICICI Bank as well, both on a year-to-date and on a one-year parameter. And average delivery volumes, again, 57 lakh shares up 18%. Uh, you know, when ICICI Bank and SBI do well, that's telling you that it's a bet on the country's financial savings as well. Uh, now, capital goods. Uh, the one stock that really stands out is BEL. I think for me, it's been the most remarkable stock of last one or two months. Average delivery volumes of 37 lakh shares, up 30%, and this stock is up 20% since August. So that's the kind of move that you've seen in BEL. Uh, in consumption, Titan very quietly has moved up. I don't think too many people have noticed, but the stock's moved up 10% since August. And again, decent delivery volumes as well, 4.5 lakh shares is what you've seen. Now, autos, uh, this is a space, of course, on your track as well. Uh, now, all the talk has been about Mahindra and Mahindra, but the month of August has been catch-up play in these three stocks. Look at the moves in TVS Motor, Aishan Motors, and Ashok Leyland. TVS Motors, stunning move, 15%. Aishan Motors reclaiming its old glory, and Ashok Leyland was up about 10%. Uh, and just to round things off, IT is still underperforming. Despite this week's outperformance, TCS is down 4% since the start of August. It's underperformed Nifty by about 8%, and it's underperformed Nifty by about 18% this year. So this, this selling that you're seeing in, uh, in IT from FI, in my sense, is uh, largely because of uh, Infosys. But the big talking point is really the kind of buying that you've seen in financials, auto, consumer, basically the domestic economy. FIs are turning bullish once again on India. Let me show it to you. What are you tracking? So, Anu, you know, as, as you said, you know, FIs are back. And that was the theme for the last four or five weeks, right? That I've been continuously saying that that's the feedback from dealing rooms that the FI is putting money back and they have turned buyers. So that's that's playing out in some sectors and stocks as well. Uh, you know, f for this week or for the last few days, the overall feedback from the market, one, India is continu uh, continues to outperform and largely because of the FI money which is back and they're backing some of the large cap names within financials and the auto names and all. Technically, now the feedback is both Nifty and Bank Nifty are above the breakout level. So there is still a lot of room uh, and, uh, uh, you know, above 18,000 on the Nifty, maybe for, uh, above 40,000 on the Bank Nifty, you're, you're going to see more money chasing those sectors <coughs> and a bit of short covering as well. So that's the technical factor that one needs to watch out for. Uh, from a retail participation point of view, look at the, uh, look at the uh, you know, mutual fund data. There is a bit of withdrawal of money from the retail investors, and that's what is pinching a lot of retail guys. You know, there, there is a bit of left out feeling as well. Even in the conference there in Chennai, there was a there was a feeling that oh, we we sold out a little early, and now we want to catch up and again again reinvest. So there is a bit of left out feeling as well among retail investors. Having said that, my money back. There is a lot of momentum. Everybody is talking about markets going up. There are a few signs and indications of being a bit a bit of warning signals, so to speak, uh, in in some pockets, and something that we need to watch out for. One, of course. The quality of mid small caps that have rallied in the last 10, 15, 20 days, you know. And uh, when I talk to a lot of dealers and, and market participants in the market, everybody has a story to sell and every and those stocks go up. So that again is a sign that there is a bit of exuberance now in mid caps, small caps. Some quality stocks are giving you an indication that, hey, you need to be a bit careful, uh, you know, going forward from here on. Also, the supply of paper. While, you know, uh, you, you spoke about FIS buying, there is constant supply of paper coming in from strategic investors. Even this week, there is so many large block, deal hap uh, block deals have happened, right? Interglobe, Kangwal has sold 2.3, uh, 2.8%. He owns 35%, by the way. So there is going to be, you know, uh, supply, supply of paper from that, from the, on that group. Sinjin, Biocon sold 3, uh, 5%. CG Power, uh, you know, one of the, one of the largest, uh, best, uh, you know, Standard Chartered Bank sold out. Bharti Airtel, Singtel is selling out. So there is the supply of paper which will balance out the FI flow, so to speak. But... <clears throat> There are some signs now 
of bit of exuberance in some pockets which mm. one needs to factor in but technically market looks like in a sweet spot to rally further from your purely from a breakout point of view mm. okay so since fii's are you know putting in a lot of money in the indian markets so the question we are asking is why right yes. why are fii's putting money in india versus others so i decided to put together some interesting data on how india is outperforming despite the global macro situation so let's take a look at it now well the big question that we're asking is why has india outperformed global peers are the macros in india much better than the global macros and here's what we found out first take a look at the outperformance that india has seen versus its peers the nifty is up 3% this year versus most global peers under pressure the s&p 500 hang seng are down almost about 16 odd percent now let's look at the global environment which is very challenging at the moment uh, the dollar index hit a 20 year high of 109 last week versus about say 92.1 in 2017 and the all time high which was 120 way back in July of 2001 just look at the trajectory that the dollar index has seen and of course we do know that a higher dollar index is negative for risky assets like equities let's move on to the us 10 year yield which rallied from 2.6% in august and now it's at 3.3% Apart from that there's been a sharp surge in global energy prices as well. US natural gas prices have seen a 50% rise in the last 3 months from $5.4 per MMBTU all the way to $8 per MMBTU. European natural gas prices have also risen and are now at the highest since July of 2008. but let's move on to indian macros and see whether they are improving compared to global peers and the answer is a big yes take a look at brent crude prices down 30% from march 10 year yields have softened to 7.2% which is down 83 basis points from the month of june and then you have the indian corporate profitability which has improved quite a bit motilal oswal put out a report where they said that the corporate profit to gdp ratio is now at a decadal high of 4.3% for nifty 500 companies and motilal estimates it's an 18% nifty eps growth in fy23 not just that inflation has been falling for the last 4 months and the pmi data remains elevated at 54 plus so all in all indian macros are definitely improving compared to its global peers and hence the inflow of fii money let's take a quick break on that note coming up with lots more on editors round table stay tuned <laughs> Welcome back here tuned into Editors Roundtable here on CNBC TV 18. Well, India seems to be in a sweet spot as we have been telling you. It may not be a linear line for the markets of the economy, but we seem to be heading in the right direction. And the reason I say that is because of three broad themes. One is finalized financialization of savings, digitization and formalization of the economy as well. Let's start off with formalization of the economy. GST collections I recall are celebrating when we were hitting around 1 lakh crore dot. For the last 6 months we have been having around the 1.4 lakh crore dot. So that's positive. Jandan accounts. We just take a look at the way it's moved from around 15 crore accounts we're at around 45 crore accounts and what's better is close to 80% of those well they are actually operational and the amount in every account has moved from around 1200 odd all the way to around 4000 uh, rupees. Now the other factor finali- financialization of savings. household savings you know if you look at equities as a percentage of savings well that was in the low single digits that's gradually moved to around 5% and i believe that it's moving towards uh, you know the double digits and high single digits odd and we have a long way to go because western world well it's anything between 20 to around 30% in some cases even more than that besides that there is an equity cult here in india from uh, you know in the in the last 3 years or so the total number of dmat accounts well that's been the big talking point all this week right we're at around 10 crore uh, odd Moving on then the average monthly SIPs remember just a few years ago we were at around 3 4000 not just take a look at the way we are going we are clocking close to 12000 crores in terms of average SIPs in the last 5 years we are up close to around 4 times odd the indian mutual fund industry as well we have the average assets under management well that's moved up big time moved up by nearly around 5 times in the last 10 years or so and that's the updated number that we got at the end of this week itself the digitization themes continues to play out and that's very encouraging as well the upi transaction just take a look at the growth for the month of august big time growth you know in comparison both the number of transactions as well as the quantum in terms of values and and finally dematerialization of insurance policies personally i think this is going to be really really good news all the new insurance policies that will be taken they'll have to be dematerialized not just that even the ones that have been taken in the past they as well will have to be uh, de- uh, dematerialized so that's telling you the kind of digitization drive that's on the ground stocks that you need to focus on well self explanatory up for you on the screen as well short point is india in the right direction 
onwards and upwards. Back to you guys. Okay, Nigel, thanks a lot for that. And to discuss all of this, we have with us Nilesh Shah, Managing Director at Kotak Mahindra AMC. Uh, uh, Nilesh, bhai, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, you know, clearly, it's the domestic retail investor who I think uh, should uh, salute themselves, right? Uh, they have kept themselves in the game in a market in which there was so much against them. Uh, but do you get a sense that the market's getting a bit exuberant or uh, is it fine? Your thoughts? So Anuj Pai, if you look at the world, there is a massive sandstorm blowing out there. If we look inside India, it looks like oasis in the desert. So shorter term fundamentals of India will get impacted by global sandstorm. But once the dust settles, we will be the only oasis in the world. From a flow point of view, we have seen massive turnaround in foreign portfolio flows. In a market where both local and foreigners are buying and IPO supply is not emerging, there is only one way for prices to go. The third thing, Anuj Bhai, I met a global investor and while presenting India, I was talking that we are now at a significant premium to MSCI Emerging Market Index. And he told me, Nilesh Bhai, Najariya Badaliye, you are looking at one-year valuation. In my position, I am looking at five-year valuation. India is the cheapest emerging market. Mm. So we are right now in a positive territory of fundamentals and flows. But please remember while investing that there is a massive global sandstorm blowing. <clears throat> Uh, Nilesh, good evening and thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, I was also discussing about why the Indian macros are doing much better than the global macros, right? And one data point that stood out for me is the corporate profit to GDP ratio, which is now at a decadal high of 4.3% uh, this year so far. Uh, since corporate profitability is increasing, I want to understand from you which are the pockets where you're seeing the maximum amount of traction. We do know that there's a structural shift that we're seeing in the banking space, but according to you, what stands out for the next, say, 12 to 18 months? Over the next 12 to 18 months, banks will have uh, better profitability as interest rates start stabilizing and all the treasury losses which people have booked starts getting converted into income. The second sector where we see profitability picking up pace is industrials and capital goods. This company's cut costs to survive last four or five years of period where order book was not growing that fast. Now, not only they get orders from government of India, private capital, and also exports market. The operating leverage is kicking in in capital goods, and we believe profitability growth there will be superior. Probably the only disappointment on the profitability side is likely to come from sectors like pharma or IT, where it is the margin which is getting impacted. But even there, the profitability growth will still be positive. So overall, we are in a sweet spot where corporate earnings could easily grow anywhere between 15 to 20% over the next two to three years. Uh, hi, Nilesh. Uh, Nilesh, a very simple question. Uh, suddenly, people are now started talking about the 20,000 mark on the Nifty. But after a while, when you wake up in the morning, if the SGX is down 150, 200 points, there's a lot of happiness because people say we're going, going to get in. Your guess, early 2023, you think 20,000 on the cards? Uh, Nigel, but it's always difficult to predict short-term movement. But uh, definitely in year 2023, we will see 20,000 coming. Okay, oh. year 2023, 20, we see 20,000. Actually, that would be uh, slightly disappointing if we only stick at 20,000, right? I Maybe thought you would say 20,000 20, before Diwali this year. I mean, the way the Maybe. market is going, it looks like it's going to be there Maybe very soon. 23,000 should be the aim, right? I mean, of course, not, the, <laughs> not immediately. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, uh, what kind of compounding can we expect over the next five years? Okay, let me ask you this. Since you refer to five-year valuation, so normally, we had seen very high inflation in the past. Compared to that, our inflation is now in low single digit. So your return compounding can come down from on a nominal basis. But should we be targeting low double digit compounding? Answer is yes, that is plausible. 
Okay, all right. Well, uh, just one word before we let you go, Nilesh. What do you think could be the theme, the big theme, uh, over the next couple of months? So, Sonia, for this is more a retail investor answer than institutional investor answer. India is a rising tide. All all boats will get lifted as long as it doesn't have a hole. So please invest in good companies run by good managers where promoters won't take you for a ride or shortchange you. As long as you are sitting in a boat without hole, India growth story will lift everyone. Okay, and it seems like a lot of the holes in the India boat, even if there were, are getting plugged, right? I mean, at least on the macro front, we're seeing that. Nilesh, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks a lot for joining in. So clearly, the the, the exuberance, right, continues, and we've seen it in the number of DMAT accounts that have opened up in August yep. as well, right? Uh, so even if there are there is some volatility, it looks like the uptrend at least is intact. Yes, uh, uh, but you know, uh, just just to add a point, uh, prices sometimes uh, drive the narrative, right? Uh, so. Uh, got to be wary of the fact that right now we are in a winning streak so so we can say that uh, you know one thing which I keep saying is uh, in the market the biggest risk is to book your position too soon mm. in a bull market Correct. or to wait too long in a bear market to cut your loss uh, I think a lot of people have realized that uh, Sonia I think that's one thing which you got you got to trade your stops because unless the screen throws you out the market will throw you out if it has to you don't make the decision this is one thing where you know uh, I uh, you know at the risk of uh, sounding a bit sexist I used to say this uh, you know market is like uh, like your girlfriend you know uh, you just keep her happy and you know just 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 you know do what but what she wants you to do and uh, I think you'll be happy and I'm a mature <laughs> investor now keeping the wife happy <laughs> <laughs> girlfriend boyfriend wife husband you need to keep the spouse happy right so let's just make it market is like your spouse you need to keep them happy <laughs> or whatever it is all right folks uh, thanks a lot editor and thank you to our viewers for joining us on the, this edition of Editor's Roundtable. Have a great weekend.